may actually be the easiest. Now, finance news with Joanna Townsend. And Joe. there's now more people in jobs than there has been in a very long time. That's right, Michael. Our jobless rate is now just 4.5% as fewer people sought work, again fanning the interest rate speculation fire. The 31-year low saw our currency rise as traders started to increase their bets on an interest rate rise. And there's a raft of company news out today also. Optus took a hit, a 15% decline in net profit for the third quarter against tough competition and the trend to ditch the fixed line in favour of a mobile, although operating revenue firmed. And the latest profit from News Corp represents a big turnaround for the company, which in the past few months finally threw off the danger of its lurking rival shareholder John Malone from Liberty Media. Profits from News Corp were $2.14 billion, one and a half times last year's earnings, which were hit by one-off costs. The success came from big improvements in its Sky Italia television business and from its film division. The big success here was the unique and remarkable success of that Kazakhstani ambassador, Orash. We're now joined by Juliana Rodley from Comsec. Juliana, welcome back. What's the news out of Qantas today? Well, we got their half-year result. We saw earnings up by just 1.7% to $358.7 million. They did announce a sweetener to their investors today, a special dividend of 15 cents a share. But now we'll all just have to sit wait around and wait for the takeover statement, which is rumoured to be out at the end of the week, Joanna. Mm, should be interesting. And that jobs figure really surprised the market today, didn't it? Yes, well, as you said, there was less people looking for work. The data also showed that job security is at record levels here in Australia. It was a surprise, but we should have seen it coming. We've seen job advertisements have been sliding over the last few months, and they are due to continue to move lower. Thanks, Juliana. Let's head to the markets now, and the All Ordinaries finished trade up two. Lion Nathan's lower. It won't go ahead with a rumoured share buyback. And our dollar is buying 78.12 US cents. That's the day in finance. Back to you now, Michael. Thank you, Joe. And still on business, Holden has struck a billion dollar deal to export Commodores to America. The high performance VE Commodore SS sedan will be built in left hand drive and rebranded as the Pontiac G8 for General Motors. The best way to show uh, a market that's probably as spoiled as ours that, uh, that Australia can do it as well, if not better, than anyone else is to actually put a vehicle there. It's expected the cars will go on sale in America early next year. After the break, baby news. Rumours actress Naomi Watts is expecting her first child. And in sport, the Oli Roos give Taiwan a football lesson. Current affair, Sydney squatters living in a $9 million waterfront home. Please leave. And hey, you're hey, footing hey, the bill. Hey, hey. Plus, they have everything. Fame and fortune. So why do so many celebrity families fall apart? And Vegemite Wars. Our Aussies are defending our national icon. Americans are the joke. It's a cyber joust. A current affair tonight. An American military helicopter has crashed in Iraq, killing all seven passengers and crew. The Sea Knight troop transport was on fire as it went down. While US military officials say it was most likely a mechanical fault, an Al-Qaeda-linked Sunni group has claimed responsibility. It's the fourth military helicopter to crash or be brought down in Iraq in less than three weeks. Meantime, neighbouring Iran has test-fired a new air defence system. The surface-to-air missiles were imported from Russia and have a range of up to 20 kilometres. The US has protested the sale, which comes as Iran grows nervous that either America or Israel could launch airstrikes against its nuclear facilities. Aussie actress Naomi Watts has made no secret of her desire to have a baby, adding weight to rumours that she and her boyfriend of two years, Liv Schreiber, are expecting their first child. According to a US magazine, the 38-year-old is entering her second trimester and has started to develop a baby bump. The magazine says the couple is thrilled and will most likely get married before the little one is born. Turning to sport now, and England captain Michael Vaughan has been ruled out of the one-day final series because of a hamstring injury. Meanwhile, controversial umpire Darrell Hare is suing the International Cricket Council and the Pakistani Cricket Board. The Australian claims both bodies are racist and he shouldn't have been sacked. It's not quite the MCG, but Darrell Hare was just glad to be umpiring at all. The issue has now been resolved. Still to come, all the weather details with Janie Seal.
this weather report brought to you by the Holden Driveaway Deals. So it's bye bye 2006 at your Holden dealer. On now. Hi there. Well, the really intense rain is easing for northern Queensland as the low travels in a southeasterly direction. Now, the main activity will be centred between Mackay and Gladstone with up to 40 millimetres worth. Fresh southerly winds for the southeastern states today, but unfortunately barely a drop of rain to be seen. We do have severe storms popping up over the northeastern parts of New South Wales right now. We could get more hail and again up to around 30 to 40 millimetres like yesterday. Now, a front has just moved south of WA, bringing southwest winds to Perth up to around 45 k's an hour and a cooler day. Now tomorrow the southern half of the country will pretty much stay dry again with winds coming in from an easterly direction. A trough through inland New South Wales will bring storms to the northern and central ranges. The Queensland coast looking mostly dry. Brisbane still no rain for you tomorrow but Sydney in for some more showers with the help of those southeasterly winds. A milder day for the city, 23 degrees. Melbourne warm with fresh southerly winds in the afternoon and some late gusty storms up in Darwin. Now for Saturday moist onshore winds will bring showers to the east coast. Storms for Queensland for the inland parts, eastern New South Wales, Victoria and Tassie along the trough, mostly fine for South Australia and over in WA. And then Sunday more rain and storm action along the eastern ranges. Another wet day for the east coast with those onshore winds and an overnight shower for Perth as the next front moves in. But we definitely need that rain in the south, Michael. Don't we? Thanks, Janie. Finally, archaeologists in Italy have unearthed an extraordinary tale of love frozen in time. For more than 5,000 years, these human skeletons have lain undisturbed, locked in an embrace. They were uncovered near Verona, the setting for Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Scientists say the couple probably died young because their teeth were mostly intact. One theory being examined is that the man was killed and the woman then sacrificed, so his soul would be accompanied into the afterlife, effectively meaning they'd be together forever. And that is the afternoon edition. You can keep up to date on the latest news through our website at 9msn.com.au forward slash news. Our next major bulletin's at 6 o'clock. Nightline tonight's at 11.30. Just a reminder, we won't have the afternoon edition tomorrow because of our coverage of the one-day cricket finals. But for now, I'm Michael Usher. Thanks for your company.